Hey Internet, it's RJ. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode today. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at Fifth Third and their credit card catalog. Now, they're a smaller bank, sure, but Fifth Third has been making a push, at least regionally as of late, and they have some really good bank account bonuses as well. So in today's show, we're going to cover a little bit about Fifth Third. We'll take a look at their card catalog for both business and personal. Then I'll give you some thoughts on it and tell you if it's worth your time to consider or not. So if that sounds interesting to you and you just want to make your life a Fifth Fifth Third better. See, shameless plug, Fifth Third help you out already. Go ahead, press the subscribe button, let's get to work. Okay, so first up, let's familiarize ourselves with Fifth Third as we don't talk about them a whole lot. So Fifth Third Bank is headquartered in Cincinnati, Ohio. They were founded back in June 7th of 1858 as the Bank of the Ohio Valley. Currently, they have $203 billion in assets under management, which makes them the 14th biggest bank in the U.S., and they have locations in Florida, Georgia, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Michigan, North Carolina, Ohio, Tennessee, and West Virginia. Okay, so when we're talking fifth third cards, we're primarily talking cash back. So points earnings here, cards are going to earn cash back. Um, their points do expire after three years, which again, three years is a long time, but any time you have in your terms and conditions points expire, I have to knock you for that. And redemption options, so you can deposit it into a fifth third account, you can receive a check and then go take it to whatever bank you want. Um, interesting redemption here, you can actually redeem them towards certain mortgage products. So if you get like a 15, 30 year, I think they had home equity lines on there as well. If you had a payment coming up, you could actually redeem cash back towards that, which is an interesting use case for a bank that I don't think I've seen before. You can also get gift cards. They have travel options. I, I feel like it won't actually be that big of a deal. And then you can donate them as well. Now, this is normally the part where I tell you about the application rules, but as we can see here, Fifth Third is not a huge player in the credit card space, so as a result, we don't really know a ton about their application rules. I can tell you from their website and having a relationship with them briefly for a bank account bonus, it looks like if you have an account open with them, then you can apply for their cards online. However, if you do not have a relationship, that's not saying you have to have a relationship, but you have to either phone them up or go into a branch to apply for the card. Um, I had to actually go in branch to get the bank account set up. Took about an hour. So a little bit on the old school side of things. Things. However, you'll quickly see as we go through this, it's not necessarily going to matter card rules, how many you can have and apply for, things like that. Also worth noting here, none of these cards have active sign-up bonuses at the moment. In the time of recording, it is early June of 2021. With that said, if you know anything about Fifth Third cards, rules, or whatnot, please feel free to drop them down below. Without further ado, let's take a look at the catalog. So starting out with the Secured Platinum Card, an annual fee of $24. Interesting move there. Deposit is going to be $300 minimum into a checking account, and this will become your effective line of credit. Now this deposit is refundable, which is always nice to see. Next up, we have the Truly Simple Card. So this is your classic balance transfer card. Benefits here are going to be that 0% intro APR for the first 15 billing cycles on purchases and balance transfers. Now we come to what Fifth Third is using kind of as their flagship card. This is the cash back card. No annual fee. Your multipliers here can be 1.67 on all purchases. More on that in a second. Benefits can be no foreign transaction fees, which is nice for a card like this. And interestingly enough, you do get cell phone coverage as this is a MasterCard, so it's bringing over some of the MasterCard benefits. So you can see here $800 per claim, but the max is $1,000 in claims per year, two claims per year total, and that is a $50 deductible. Now pausing here for a second with the more on the 1.67x back on purchases. Originally, I was upset about that. I was like, why would you do 1.67? How am I even going to do the math quickly on that? I mean, yes, I guess technically you can say it's more than Chase, but it's still less than the double cash. Well, there's an Easter egg here. I don't know if you got it or not. Pause for a second, think about it, and then put your answer down below. Okay, if you didn't get it, bank fifth third, five divided by three, and there you go, 1.67. So I take it back, fifth third. I'm not mad about the 1.67. I think that's actually kind of funny once you get it. It's also funny they don't even mention it at all on their site. So I think that's funny. But um, back to their show. So next up, we have the preferred cash back card. No annual fee. Now, this is only available to preferred banking clients. Multipliers here, 2x back on all purchases. So you step up. You don't get a fun Easter egg like the 1.67. Uh, benefits here are pretty similar. No foreign transaction fees. And you get that same cell phone coverage as this is also a MasterCard. 
Now they do have one business card here, and that is the commercial card. And this is fairly interesting take. So annual fee is $250, but it is waived with $350,000 in spend per year on the card. Now on the side, I did not see any multipliers advertised for this card, which is kind of amazing considering how much spend they think you're going to put on it. Uh, but you do get a, ben a lot of benefits, and that's really what they're pushing here. So master coverage, purchase assurance, extended warranty, VAT reclaim service of your making purchases overseas. That is interesting. I haven't seen that before. Travel accident insurance and then master rental insurance. However, your balance must be paid in full, so you cannot carry a balance. So this is basically operating like a charge card. Okay, so there you have it. That's the full catalog for Fifth Third Bank at the time of recording. So let me give some quick opinions on the cards, then we'll figure out if there's right for you or not, because I think it's going to be very easy to overlook one of these, but I've got a comparison that might make you think twice if you're banking with Fifth Third. So first up, that secured card. You should never have to pay an annual fee for a secured card. It's $24. I get that. There's no need for it. I would pass. You can find better cards out there if you're in need of a secured card. The balance transfer card is kind of just it is what it is. Every card issuer has one. Now the cashback card is somewhat interesting. Again, I like the Easter egg there. Of course, the multiplier is going to be beat out a few times over by a lot of other no annual fee cards. Cell phone protection is nice to have on a card like this, along with the no foreign transaction fees as well. Especially when we just saw something like the PayPal MasterCard a few weeks ago add back in foreign transaction fees. So that's a nice touch. Now I'll do the preferred cash last, but the business card is also interesting to me from the standpoint of they at least don't advertise multipliers, but they want you to put a ton of spend on it at 350k just to get that annual fee to zero. I really don't think it's worth it. This card to me almost seems like it's supposed to be like a warehouse line in your pocket with that larger credit line I assume you would get with them wanting you to put 350k on it. However, having to pay that balance in full at the end of each month is also kind of weird for a credit card. Granted, we should all pay our balances in full, but still kind of weird to call out. But anyways, that brings us to the cash preferred card. Now, I think at a first pass, it's easy to dismiss this card. So first of all, you do need that preferred checking status with Fifth Third. So this is really for folks who are already banking with Fifth Third and only want one bank to deal with between their account and their credit cards and probably their other banking products. So when I first looked at this, I was like, ah, it's not, it's 2%, which is the table minimum, but is it really worth it or how does it stack up to the other cards? And that's when I came across this chart, which is a comparison from Clark.com. But what they actually do here is take a look at the fifth third preferred compared to the city double cash and a few other cards. So believe it or not, you can see how it stacks up. So no annual fee, both are getting 2%. Redemptions for the cashback are fairly similar. There's no welcome bonus, which kind of sucks. You don't really care about the intro APR on a card like this as much. Now, interestingly enough, the fifth third card does have no foreign transaction fees. As well, the City Double Cash does have 3% um, foreign transaction fee. Now, you also get the cell phone coverage for the fifth third card as well. And you don't for the City Double Cash. To my understanding, they still haven't added that, which is weird because City Double Cash is a master card. So it could have it, but for whatever reason, City has not brought that in. So I share that chart because I thought it was actually really interesting to look at how those two cards stack up. Now, I would take this two different routes. If you have no banking relationship at all with Fifth Third Bank or you don't mind having having multiple cards over here and accounts over there and what have you, then no, I wouldn't bother with it still. I would probably still go for a lot of the other options that we talk about more frequently on the channel. However, if you do have a banking relationship with Fifth Third, you really like them, you just like having one bank and only having to deal with one location, then getting the preferred card isn't actually a bad option. You're still going to get your 2%. You've got some decent redemptions. You've got cell phone insurance if you want to use it, and you've got no foreign transaction fees should you need it. And that for a no annual fee card from a smaller regional bank compared to the big guys is really not that bad of an offering. So as a result, I think that card is the star of the show for that target demographic. Graphic. But again, for everyone else out there playing the credit card game, there are no sign-up bonuses to be had here, which means your time is probably better spent somewhere else. So anyways, guys, if you liked this one, drop me a thumbs up down below. If you found it particularly interesting, then consider subscribing to the channel, posting content just like this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Of course, we have that Sunday recap episode as well. My question for you guys is let me know one of two things. Let me know what you thought about Fifth Third, if you bank with them, if you've used them in the past. Let me know what you think. And let me know if you like highlighting some of these smaller banks that we really don't talk about that often and going through their credit card lineup. We've had Fifth Third, we've had BBVA, we've had PNC. There's definitely more out there with options. They just tend to be more regional. But if you find interest in it, then I'm happy to take a look at their card catalogs and put them on display. 
But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this one. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next one.